OK, so we're going to look at how to calculate the forces in a pin-jointed truss using a graphical method. And the type of structures I'm talking about here are, can be seen. There's lots of examples from bridges simply supported using these triangulated members showing the tension and uh, erecting of struts. And also we have got the Eiffel Tower, which has got these triangulated sections in it very famous truss if you like, uh, space structures and even the trusses in the roof sections of your house. So how are we going to analyse this? We're going to break it down and consider the um, members in between the joints shown on this diagram here and the blue dots represent the joints and the black lines in between are the members and if these members are acting as a strut, then they are in the, under compression, and that is represented as follows on these diagrams. So the arrows are pointing into the joints. For a tie, they are pulling out of the joints as follows. So that tells us the directions of the forces. To get the magnitude of the forces, we have to draw a scale force diagram. And this is the example I've got. So we're considering a section of a truss. So yeah, at say uh, 60 degrees in all the angles, so it's an equilateral triangle, 300 newtons applied to the top joint. And you'll notice this is uh, labeled the spaces in between the forces as opposed to the ends of the members. So this is called a space diagram. So, for instance, um, the 300 newtons would be referred to as AB. This member here would be referred to as BD. This would be CD, and this would be AD. So we consider each joint individually, and we always start with a known force, which in this case is the 300 newtons. So this is our known force, and you can see here we've got a sketch of the top joint. So what we do is we need to draw a line which represents this known starting force. And we know that that is a, a vertically down to 100 newtons. So I'm going to get my ruler out here, and we're going to draw a line which represents 300 newtons. So this will be 100. 200, 300 newtons. So you can use your own scale and we're going to draw the arrow to show the direction of that force and the space diagram was labelled AB in uppercase for the force diagram we use lowercase AB and the ends of the arrows. Now we turn to the joint diagram, we'll see that if we go around this clockwise, then the next force we come across is the BD. And you'll notice that this member here refers to this member here, which is at 60 degrees. So I need to set a 60 degree angle up here, and then we draw a line starting at B. 60 degrees. And B will go to D, but we don't know exactly where it is yet because we don't know how long that line is. But what we do know is that if we continue around this joint diagram, we know that we end up at A, which is where we started. And we do so by going through this line here, AD, and AD is this line here, which is also at 60 degrees. So we need to set our ruler up at 60 degrees in the other direction and it has to finish where we started which is at point A. So we're finishing where we started and where those lines intersect that will tell us the point D is there. So now we can put on the arrows and these arrows they just chase each other around the triangle like that. That's useful information because now we transfer those exact arrows back onto your joint diagram. 
So you see the BD is here. DA is this one here, which is also pointing into the joint there. So because they're both pointing into the joint, they're both struts. So we can now say BD is a strut and AD is a strut. But what about the magnitudes of those vectors? Well, we just get our ruler. This is a scale diagram now. So you will be able to get your ruler out and do the same as I'm doing and read off the values. So this is looking about 150, 160, about 170. About 170 newtons. And we do the same for BD. So we need to bring this around. Like this. And measure it according to the scale that you set. And that looks around about the same, about 170. Okay. So what we do now is we now move on to the next joint, which will be this one down here. So this is the bottom right hand joint, and as before, top tip is to start with the known force. Well the known force is the BD, and that was what we found in the previous joint diagram. We know from that previous analysis that BD is a strut, which means it points into that top joint, as did AD. If it points in the top, then it also points into the bottom joint as well. So we can put what we know onto the diagram as follows. And that is the, the line that we need to start our diagram with. So it's at 60 degrees, and it's going to be 170 long, as follows. We know that the arrow is pointing down. And be careful now here, we know that if we're starting clockwise, you see that we start, we label this D going to B. D going to B. And if we continue going clockwise around this joint, we'll notice the next force we come across is R2, which is vertically upwards. So let's draw that in. Here. Again, we don't know how long this line is, so we're just going to put it in there for now. We know that C is somewhere up there on that line, and the arrow is pointing up, as it is indeed here. The next force we come across is CD in this member here, and CD is a horizontal line. So we're going to draw a horizontal line get your ruler and it has to end where we started which was D that tells us where the lines intersect there is point C and we can put the arrows in as well and if we put that arrow in from this from this force diagram onto your joint diagram you will see that this tells us that CD is pulling out of this joint and so therefore this is a tie. And we can determine the magnitudes of these as well. We know that R2, well R2 is a, is a reaction force. It's pushing into the joints, acting as a strut, but it has a value. So we're going to work out the values now just by reading off here. So CD looks to me, according to my scale, to be about 90 newtons there. So it's roughly 90 newtons. When you do your diagrams you can do it a lot more accurately than this. Oops, let's go back. And now let's measure the line. Let's get on the right diagram here. We need to measure this angle here, so this length, this line, sorry, and that was 170, that's good, so that was our starting one, and then we come around here, 
We had our 90. Yeah, that's around about 90, that's fine. Okay, good. So let's go across and get this reaction force measured. So that's looking like it's about 150 according to my scale. Well that's a good result because if you know anything about resolving forces we know that they've got 300 newtons on the top here pushing down and this is a symmetrical structure so we should know that the, the, the reaction forces are sharing the loads equally and so you'd expect them to have 150 newtons either side which is half of 300 so that scale diagram is looking good. We can put in the arrow as well to show that it's a tie. And if it's a tie on the right, it's going to be a tie over here. So the final step would be to repeat the process on the bottom left joint, just to confirm the values, although in fact we now know all the values anyway, but we'll do it just for completeness. So we start with the known force. Well, we could start with any of the known forces, either the AD, which is a known now, or the CD. Let's start with CD because it's horizontal. So we start with CD and in fact it's DC as you can see. So we've got DC and we found DC to be around about 90 newtons I think. Yes, roughly 90 newtons. So you want a horizontal line Approximately 90 newtons on this scale. This is going from D to C. So from D to C, and we know that the C's are they're ties, aren't they? So in fact, they're pulling out of these joints like this. So D to C. It's going to be in this direction like that. C to A is a reaction force. So let's put that reaction force on. So C to A is somewhere up there. And then A to D is the 60 degree line which ends at D. So we, we make sure that it ends at D and that intersects with that other line there and that tells us where the point A is. Put our arrows on, chasing around like so. And those all line up. Okay, so let's just measure these lines. So we're getting about 170 on that one for AD, which is what we had before. So that's good. And CA. It looks like we're getting about 100 40 in this case, so it's not quite to the same accuracy as the previous one. Okay. So it's always good practice at the end just to summarise your results. These are the actual um, exact results from an analysis using uh, a different approach, but you can see that the values that we obtained were very close to those indeed.